Hey, thanks for checking out this sermon. I'm Chris. I'm one of the pastors here at The Journey. We really hope that this sermon is meaningful for you. Uh, we worship every Sunday here at The Journey at 930. We have social media, we have Facebook, we have a website. We would love to connect with you and we hope that this sermon today is inspirational and helps you understand who God is and how much God loves you. But we know that uh, this sermon is not to take away from being a part of a church. And so we hope you check us out or get involved in another faith community. But we really hope this sermon is meaningful for you today. So today's topic, our spiritual discipline we're talking about, it's actually two, it's meditation and study. So if you find yourself with a little extra time this week or over the next few weeks, this is a practice that will actually be great. Meditation is really good, especially when we're feeling anxious, when we feel like things are going out of control. It helps us to focus back on God. So I want to tell you a little bit about meditation to start because you might get some images when you think about meditation and maybe you're thinking of a person meditating and what you're really thinking is maybe some Eastern religion practices of meditation. Now Christian meditation and Eastern religion meditation have some similarities but they also have some important differences. So the, both of these practices calm the body, calm the mind, make us aware of what's happening. Eastern meditation is all about emptying yourself. It is setting aside all the things that might worry you. But in Christian meditation, we don't stop there. We have to then go about accepting this time of God filling us so we don't remain empty. There are steps in both of these that help us to really set aside all those worries. In the Bible, there are two different words that are translated meditate. And those words mean to speak to yourself. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm thinking through things, I start talking to myself out loud. It helps me walk through things. It can mean to remember or to read syllable by syllable, taking things slowly and intentionally. It also has this meaning of meditation and conversation, not as two separate things that happen, but something that's happening at the same time. When we meditate, we are having a conversation with God. Meditation is intentional stillness in God's presence. So what I want you to do, I'm going to offer you um, one way that we can do this together. And so I'd encourage you wherever you are to try this. Uh, first up, take your hands. Hands are great in positions, are great as physical reminders of what we're actually doing in our spirits. So first I want you to put your palms down. And this is a time of pouring out everything before God anything you're worried about. Now, normally, if we were meeting in person, I'd also encourage you to grab a prayer request card that if there's something on your heart that you would like prayer for, to be jotting that down to place in our baskets. Obviously, we're not doing that today. So instead, if you have a prayer request and you would like to type that into the comment section, I would encourage you to do that. If you're maybe watching this video after our live time, feel free to send us a message through Facebook or even an email or a phone call. We will take prayer requests all week long. If you want it to be private, please just indicate that. If not, we will also send those prayer requests out with our weekly email so we as a church can be praying together. So whatever it is that is on your heart, whatever anxiety, worry, burdens you feel like you're carrying, to just take that time and set that before God. And then to turn your palms up. And to then be in a spirit of receiving from God. Now, you don't have to keep your hands like this the entire time, but keep that spirit of receiving as we go on. If you are going to practice meditation at home this week, here's some important things. First of all, no phone. I don't know about you, but there's this thing that happens at my house. Anytime I'm even talking on the phone, my kids know it. They can be in opposite sides of the house and they know when I'm on the phone and they start chasing me down. There have been times I find myself running through the house with my phone just to try to keep silent so I can talk. In the same way, when you try to meditate, when you try to spend intentional time with God, chances are your phone's gonna ring or you're gonna get a message, and we are in the habit of being tempted to pick up our phone and check it right away. Not just that, but it also serves as a distraction. Maybe we suddenly think, oh, I better check on this, or I better look at the time. 
So set your phones aside for a time of meditation. You should also turn off other distractions. Maybe in your house that's the TV or the radio. Maybe it's finding a certain location in your home where you can sit and know that you will have stillness. Remember why you're meditating. It is all about making room so that God can transform us. Meditation deals with our inward state. Now, I don't know about your inward state, but I think most of us have this in common, that our inward state is one of hurry and rushing. Especially over the past couple of days, you may have felt the need to hurry and get things ready. Any kind of hurry that's going on in your life, it's about calming the inward state relying totally on God and allowing God to fill us. I'd also encourage you as we're going through, we're going to do some meditation and study on scripture. So if you are a person who likes to take notes, grab a notepad. If you are a person who's like, oh, I hate lined paper. I hate thinking inside the box. Grab a piece of paper just to doodle on, to draw some pictures, whatever that looks like. So you can record what your reactions are. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through a scripture passage in two ways. Meditation and study do kind of go hand in hand, but they are very different. They're different ways of approaching scripture. And so what I'd like you to do is first we're going to go through a passage and we're going to do the meditation portion. We're going to do this using our five senses. And this is something you can do at home as well. You remember your five senses. What do you touch? What do you feel? as you hear the scripture. What do you hear? And that's not necessarily the words. It can be the words. But if you're picturing yourself in the story, what do you hear around you? What do you see? What do you taste? And what do you smell? And so as we go through this passage, I'll give you the passage, but I want you to wait a minute before you grab your Bibles and turn there. First, I want you to just listen. Listen to the words of the passage. We're in Mark chapter 4, and I'll be reading um, starting in verse 36. So wherever you are, sometimes it's helpful to close your eyes, to just hear these words. Picture yourself as an active participant in the story. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in a boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up, and they said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? If you have your eyes closed, you can open them. Think about the story. Did you use your five senses? What was going on? What stands out to you? We're going to go to the passage again, and this time the words will be on your screen. You'll be able to see those words. You can also pull out your Bibles at home or pull up the scripture passage on your phone. So as we go through the same thing, what stands out to you? What hits you? It might be one word. It might be one sense of something you're picking up in that story. Take a deep breath. Calm yourself. And let us go through this passage again in Mark chapter 4. And it starts with Jesus leaving the crowd. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and they said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? 
have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? If th something stood out to you in that, I'd encourage you to write it down. Maybe spend some more time with that passage this week, thinking of what's standing out, what does it say to how you're feeling, what do you learn from this? We can take the same passage and think of a study approach to it. So oftentimes uh, we think when we say study, it means we're just going to go read a lot. And so we have a lot of misunderstandings when it comes to study. Sometimes we think that the ability to read means we have the ability to study well, but they're not the same thing. We also sometimes mistake knowledge. We think the more information we can get means we are all of a sudden a knowledgeable person. Like meditation, there are steps that lead into study. Just like meditation, you should remove all distractions from around you when you go to study. It can be helpful to identify a certain place in your home. For example, if you're trying to do your study right before you go to sleep and you say, I'm just going to take my Bible to bed and read it, that's great, but it's not a great time to do study of the Bible because the location of your bed tells your body it's time to sleep now. So maybe find a location where you will go to study. There are some different steps for study. The first one is repetition. Repetition is just that same thing again and again. You'll notice that even when we were meditating, we read the scripture twice, heard the scripture twice, interacted with it twice. It is good to repeat scripture when we are studying. What repetition does is it actually channels the mind in a specific direction. So that just means the more we do something, the more we start to think in a certain way. If you don't believe me, turn off the news for a while and see if your thinking starts to change a little bit. Think about things you watch on TV. If you're constantly watching violence, you start to think in a different way. It's the same reason with prayer. As we pray thank you prayers to God again and again, it trains us to be thankful in our thinking. Another step in study is concentration. This is about centering the mind. You can even use some of those meditation practices to center your mind on what you're about to do. Comprehension is the next one. That means, do you understand what you're reading? If not, you may be encountering a couple different issues. Maybe the translation you've picked to read from is just too complicated. There are so many Bible translations out there, so find one that works for you. Maybe you need to do a little study on, well, they're talking about this certain object or thing, and I need to really look at what is that to understand the passage. Also, reflection is the next step. That means we're not just reading it and getting this information, but we're trying to see from God's perspective. We're trying to think like God. Now, some examples of things you'll find in study, even related to the passage we read, um, you should be able to see an image of a boat. And so we know that this is a boat that uh, is very similar to one that would be talked about in this passage. This is the kind of boat Jesus and his disciples would have been on when there was a great storm. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid and I heard this, I was thinking like a great big boat and they were, you know, scared, but it was okay. And when I learned that these boats that look so small, I thought, oh man, this was really serious. How would they all be squeezed on this little boat and imagine the waves coming? We can learn all kinds of things. Even the word for all and fear that comes over them is repeated many times. You can go look at that. We come to scripture to be changed. So part of study is not just to get a ton of information. It's all about studying God and studying ourselves as well. So you can ask some questions as you're studying that are helpful. Maybe in the passage, what did you learn about God from this passage? What did you learn about yourself? Is the Holy Spirit speaking to you in a certain way through this passage? And if so, what are you going to do about that? So that is kind of meditation and study. 
Like we talked with prayer, it takes a lot of learning and practice to do this. So don't wait until you're thinking, yep, today is the day I'm going to sit down and study. Just find a time that this can be part of your daily practices. When will that be this week? When will you take time to meditate? When will you take time to study? Now, there is one more type of meditation that I want to talk to you about today. And I think this one is important. Uh, and it is meditating on God's creation. Maybe you are an outdoors person, and for you, you might be thinking, yes, you were talking about reading inside, and that's just not enough. I, I have to get out. So let's talk about um, just an example of what it's like to meditate on God's creation. And I'm going to use an example that has spoken to me over the years that I really like. Um, there's this thing, the Fibonacci spiral. And yep, you're about to discover how much of a nerd I really am. Uh, because it's uh, something that appears in math. Um, it's also something that appears in art. So what I discovered as I was going to college, I was taking all different classes. I would take an art class and learn about this Fibonacci spiral, the uh, perfect ratio. Um, and it's used a lot. You can see images of how the spiral appears in nature as well. And it's really cool because it appears in all different ways. Maybe it's a flower or a shell. Maybe it's how hurricanes are formed. Also in our DNA, in pictures of the galaxy, whatever it is, this spiral appears, this ratio, this equation, these numbers. And I realized as I was studying, I thought it was so interesting that I could study all these different areas, science and art and, and biology, and wherever it was, this Fibonacci spiral was showing up. And so the way I started to view that was almost like God's fingerprint on his creation and just evidence of how awesome God is, how detailed God is. And so whatever it is this week, I encourage you, step outside on your porch, open a window, look outside, see what you see in God's creation around you. How can you see evidence of God and God's bigness and greatness all around you? I also want to share that when we're meditating in that way, it kind of gives us a message. It gives us a message that no matter what happens, God is enough. I want to tell you about where the spiral showed up after I had been studying it. Studying it. I was at Children's Hospital in Philadelphia with my daughter Elizabeth, and we had been there about a week. And in that time, it was kind of crazy. It was an odd stillness, a stillness that I didn't choose but I couldn't get out, couldn't really go anywhere. I was stuck in this place and there was a lot of uncertainty and not knowing what was gonna happen. And one day I saw that there was a chapel at the hospital and I went in there and I saw the stained glass windows were the creation story, starting with in the beginning, God created. And I looked up at the ceiling and on the ceiling of the chapel at Children's Hospital is a spiral in the ceiling. It's a spiral design. And in that moment, all I could think was, wow, here is God's fingerprint once more. God created all things. God is big enough for whatever happens that although I didn't know what was going to happen, I was reassured that God is enough. And I would encourage you today that no matter what you're feeling, no matter where you are, no matter what fears you may be having or anxiety or just frustration, God is enough, and God will continue to be enough. What I'd like to do now is have a word of prayer with you. Pause wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and let's have a moment of prayer. God, we thank you that you are enough through all things. We thank you that you have created us. We thank you for moments of stillness to experience practices like meditation and study where we just get to spend time in your word learning more about you, more about ourselves. We ask that you will continue to transform us, work in our lives. Lord, be with us in this time where we may experience things like loneliness or boredom. Teach us to be the church even when we cannot be together in person. May your spirit move among us 
wherever we are, know that we are gathered in spirit before you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.